Hello everyone, this is a crazy bad with another how to play. Today we're looking at how to play this game, Robolt. Mind bending strategy, mind boggling suspense. <laughs> Ages 13 and up, it says two to four players. And it is a trick taking game. It is from Moose Task Games. You'd think that would be a Canadian company. It's Moose, but no, it's not. As you can see on the bottom, this came out in 2009. Bit of an older game. You can still find it out there if you're interested. It's one of two games by Moose Task. The other one is Hike, which I will also be doing at some point. Actually comes with an hourglass for keeping track of time during a certain scenario. And you get a couple of cards here. One that talks about the order of power of cards. And one that has some lingo on it. And then you got your deck of cards. It's a fairly normal deck of cards. You got numbered cards in four suits between two and nine. And then you got some other cards, which I'll go over. And the suits you got, by the way, are the sea cells, the cells, the ore, or paddle, the wave, and the sun. Or, sorry, not the sun, the star, the compass star, basically. I guess is what those suits are. Does it specify what they're called? Okay, ores, waves, cells, and maps is what it is. Map, not a star. And uh, the other cards you get, you get this card. You might think it's an ace. It's not. It's an anchor. Let's see, anchor. It is the lowest card in the game. It's a one. And then you got these cards. The dolphin. The mermaid. The seeker. And the whale. And... Their strength uh, is alphabetical, so D is the lowest, it's basically the 10. It's a basically a jack, a queen, and a king. So all you have to do is enable your alphabet, your ABCs, and you'll know which one is stronger. You'll know the S is stronger than the D, the M is not as strong as the W, etc., etc. You also got these other special cards here. The rowboat the moon, and the lighthouse. And each player is going to get one of these sets if you're doing two players, or you each get a set. If you're doing four players, you're going to be playing in partnerships, so each team gets a set. And if you're doing three players, each player gets a set as well. And these cards have different abilities. set it up for like a, a free player game. The rowboat is the strongest card you can play in a game so at any time during the trick you can play this you will automatically win the trick. However there is one rule and that is you cannot play it during the last trick because that wouldn't be fair. You can't just go ha it's the last trick. Ha I win it. No you can't do that. Then there is the lighthouse and the lighthouse allows you to take the sand timer turn it around and you get to look in an opponent's hand until the sun uh, until the uh, hourglass sand goes all the way down so you get some time to look at an opponent's hand memorize it inspect it see what they have and you can play this at any time and then there's the moon the moon is a card that you can play, if you're the dealer, only the dealer can play this, and you can play this before you start dealing out cards, and this allows you to specify how many cards are going to be dealt out anywhere between 4 and 12, so you can say 8, and you play this, you say 8, and you're going to deal out 8 cards to what is called the Tide, which I will explain right now. And actually, it's a probably, well, I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. So the dealer is going to shuffle up the cards, and you're going to deal out what is called a tie. This is a unique trick-taking game, in that matter. So the dealer is going to deal out cards until there is one of each suit visible. Oh, just like that, and that is the minimum amount you can do. You can have a minimum of four cards in the tie. The max is twelve. If you get to twelve cards and you don't have one of each suit. Uh, you're not going to get 
you're not going to deal any more cards. But uh, let's just deal out a few more for the funsies. <laughs> and now we're dealing out too many. Okay, there we go. So in this case, we're going to have eight cards instead of four. And that is how many cards you're going to deal to each player. So in this case, maybe scoot on over. In this case, each player is going to get eight cards. This is going to tell you how many cards you know, you're going to get. The rest of the cards go aside, so there's definitely going to be cards that you're not going to know what they are that are not going to be in the game. So you can't do any kind of card counting, which might annoy some people. Anyway, so. Next, we're going to get into the trick taking. Now, you must always play, let's say I'm the first person to play. You must play whatever this suit is. So the first round has to be the waves. And that is the trump suit. Now, if you must play that. If you have, if you don't have, you can play something else. Or for another exception. So I'm going to play the seven. And this is the trump suit for this hand. My opponent here, he's going to play the dolphin. And this guy, let's see what he has, is going to play... <clears throat> the whale. So he's going to win the trick because he played the highest card. Of course, he could just play the rowboat and won it. He's not going to do that. So for his next round, uh, he has to play the cells. So he's going to play this one. And it comes to me. I have to play as well. I'm going to play this card. Try to win this trick, the seeker. And this guy does not have something to beat that. So he's going to play this one. So I win. I'll get the score in a bit. And I will play a trick. I'll play the next one. I have to play this now. I don't have that. So I can play something else. I'm actually going to play this. This is what is known as the off-suited knob. And is the third highest card you can play. Again, the, the highest you can play is the rowboat. But you cannot lead with a rowboat. That would just be weird. Well, I guess you could technically if you don't have that suit. But you don't have to. The uh, second highest card in the game is what is called the knobs. For instance, this here is the five of cells. Uh, the card that is the same value and color, this one, is the knobs. And this is the highest card for this round. So I'm, he's going to win that trick when it comes to that. For what it's worth. And actually, is that where we're at right now? No, we're on we're at this one. <clears throat> so that is the second highest card you can play is the knob. It's the card that is the same value and color as the card that is there. Now, if, I want to explain something here. Let's say we're on, we're on this suit here, which is where we're at. He's going to play this card. But if there was a, the other blue two over here, and he wanted to save this for later, and this is the only ore he had, he could save this ore for later, but then he would be married to that knob. You would have to play that card over there. I'll, I'll try to find a better example. But he's going to play this card. He has no choice. And this guy's going to play... He's going to play this card. Since I played the highest card here, I'm going to win... I'm going to lead. And again, we have this card. Now, I, there's nothing really I can do with that. So I'm just going to play this card. This guy will play his Ace of Oars. It's the highest card currently, oddly enough, despite being the lowest card. 
And this guy is going to win it. So next we're on to this cells. And uh, he's going to play the seven. Against to me, I'm gonna play the mermaid. And this guy plays. He doesn't have anything to play. Well, actually he does. He's going to play. He has the knob. So he's going to take it with the knob. And he's going to lead the next one to his ultra cells. He doesn't have a cell. So he's going to play whatever. Actually, yeah. We're on this one. And I can't recall if you collect these as well when you win the tricks. I believe you do. But we'll just leave them there for the, point, for the moment. So on uh, this one is cells. This guy doesn't have a cell. So he's gonna play this. And it comes to me. I do have a cell, so I will win it. The next one is the oars. I do not have an oar, so I'll play this this one. And in this case, it's going to be whoever played the highest card since nobody played on suit. Nobody played the trump. Whoever played the highest card is going to win. That was this one over here. And he plays. He's playing that. He tried to save his eight. Didn't work. And that. So that is that. That's basically how it works. It's a fairly simple trick day game. Again, you can use these special cards if you want. If you're playing four players... It's basically the same rules as two players, except that partnerships. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is... Hmm, I want to find a good example here in the cards. Well, let's just use this. Let's say... For an example, that this card is over here. And let's just say that this player only has, he has this five and he has some other cards left. But he doesn't have anything for his suit. Or maybe he does, actually, sorry. So let's just put it this way. We got this card here. It is the map suit. And he has this five of maps. And since it's must follow, he has to play this card. However, since this is a knob to this card, he can actually save it for later on and marry it to the knob. And he has to, no matter what, play it at this point in time. It's a commitment, basically, like getting married. That's what's called married to the knob. <laughs> uh, and then he would just play some other card. So this is the only time, the only way you can avoid playing this trump suit if you have a card that isn't that trump suit if that's the only card you have and it's a knob for later on and you want to save it for that you can do so you must play over here and then you can just play something else over here so i just wanted to explain marrying the knob i believe that code is that um So yeah, it goes here. The highest card is the robot. The second highest is the knobs. Like this is the knob. It's the same value and color, but it's a different suit. Third highest is the trump. So if this is the card, the highest of that suit, the cells, would win. The fourth is the off-colored knob. So if I was to play a five of uh, the waves, that would be the highest one in that hand if there was no other trumps that were played. And, and then the last is just highest card played if no trumps are played whatsoever. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's basically the same no matter how many players are playing, whether it's two, three, or four, just four players as partnerships. Uh, let's talk about the scoring. Now, 
If you're doing two or three players, you cannot exceed 12 cards in the tide. We you set them down here. If it's four players, you can only go up to 10 cards. That is just to make sure that obviously there's enough cards to deal out to each player. Um, scoring, if I can find where the scoring is. So there's two types of scoring you can do. There's novice scoring, which is quite simple. That's more for beginners. And that is you're gonna get 10 points for each trick. So I would get 10, 20, 30 points. This guy would have the same thing. And this guy would have 20. That's the basic scoring, which is fine. Um, but the other thing you can do is at the beginning, you can actually make a bid on how many tricks you think you're going to win. Uh, this becomes a little bit more interesting. Now, whoever gets the 200 points first is going to win. If there is more than one person that hits 200, obviously the most points will win. When it comes to bidding, you're going to get 10 times your bid in points. So if I bid free, for going exact, if you're exact. So if I bid free tricks and I got free tricks, I'm going to get 10, 20, 30 points just like I normally would if I go scoring. However, if I bid free tricks and I only got two, let's say this guy bid free tricks and he only got two over here, so he's off camera. He only bid two, uh, he bid free tricks, he only got two. What that means is he actually is going to lose 10 points for each trick. So he's going to lose 20 points, 10 times the points for each trick. And so instead of getting points, you're going to be losing points if you fail to hit your bid. Now, if you exceed your bid, there's a rule for that as well. And that is, let's say I bid two tricks and I got three instead. Let's say I bid two and I got three. Uh, what happens in that case is this extra trick is going to become a sandbag. And you're going to mark this all down on a piece of paper, your score. So I would get 10, 20, plus one sandbag. Um, and the sandbag is kind of an interesting deal. And, I mean, if I were to bid three and I won five, I get two sandbags. So you're gonna get one sandbag for each trick you get over what you bid. But you have to be careful with that because if you get five sandbags over the course of a game, you're gonna capsize your boat, you're gonna sink, and you're gonna lose 100 points. So you wanna make sure you don't go over your bid too many times. And in some cases, it might be a good idea to go under your bid maybe to well, so that you don't go over the bid, you don't, sort of a thing. So you have to be careful. So it's kind of an interesting scoring mechanism. If you bid exactly, you're going to get 10 points each trick. If you bid under, you're going to lose 10 points for each trick. If you go over, you get 10 points for what you bid, for each trick that you bid. And a sandbag for each one that you go over. Five sandbags. Uh-oh, not good. <laughs> so that is the game in a nutshell. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's nice enough artwork. It's fine for what it is. I did a review of this deck alongside this. Make sure you check that out if you're interested. Um, that is Robo. Again, it's a bit of an older game. A little harder to find, but not impossible. It's out there. I've seen it. And that is that. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this one. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.